now we have book chat. Bamidele Adewole is our author today. Now we are reviewing this masterpiece. It's a title, The Smart Investor's Guidebook. Now I've seen uh, quite a number of books on investments. Uh, we're going to see what, I, what makes this one special. Now he is an experienced investment advisor, consultant, and a personal finance coach with a vast corporate experience in investment research and business development. It is great to have you. Thank you You are welcome. Let us get straight into it. We don't have so much time. Now, this is into 15 chapters yes. uh, and six parts, right? Correct. Uh, let's, let's get straight into it. The first part is why you may not be rich. Yes. Okay, let's kick off with that one. Okay, what so are you trying to... What, 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 are the, what, are the, what is the message you're trying to pass with this uh, uh, statement? Why you may not be rich? Okay, so the message I'm trying to pass there is really... Talking about limiting beliefs. Mm. Now, there's, a, there's, a, there's something I noticed in the society gen in general. People tend to have limiting beliefs about money. People think, and, and it's really not, sometimes it's not, it's not their fault. It's based on things that have been passed on to them. Passed down to them. Down, yeah, down to them by their parents, by society, by the economy. People think, for instance, people think if they live in Nigeria, for instance, they can't be rich. Because hmm. the system is faulty. So would you say that that's about the most common, uh, common limiting belief that we have here? I think around. it's one of the, yeah, in Nigeria, hmm. it's one of the most common limiting beliefs. So hmm. people believe that if they don't relocate to Canada or the US or the UK, they can't be rich. Wonderful. So right? by saying that it doesn't, that is just a belief. Get that off your it's mind. It's a belief. It's a, see, um, wealth is not uh, based on your environment. It's not based on your location. Hmm. Okay? Wealth is based on principles. So regardless mm. of where you are based, whether you're based uh, in Lagos... I wish we had time. This is something that a number of people would want to debate about, yes. but we, we have to move on. We have okay. to move on. Okay. Uh, quite an interesting one. The wealth creation, part two, wealth creation, and part three, we're talking together strategies to grow your income. Wealth yes. creation. What, is, what, are the, what are the basic building blocks of wealth creation? So that is essentially what I was explaining about when I spoke earlier about principles. So mm. there are certain principles that guide wealth creation. Okay. Okay? There are certain habits, quote and unquote, mm. that rich people have that the poor people don't have. Mm. Okay? So things like budgeting, right? That's very, but, very important. Budgeting. Yeah, even some rich people say, in quote, don't even have that it's one. A so lot it's of, very important. It's, it's very, very important. For someone like me, for instance, before I make any expense every month, right, before I start to spend money, I always have a budget. I bought it every single thing, right? From my NEPA bills to my water bills to my, I mean, school fees. Every single thing is on an Excel sheet. All the income that I make every month, I plan for it. So I have, I have projections for my income. What does this do for you and to your finances, budgeting? Budgeting makes you, it helps you to cut excesses. Right. Are you saying, what if, what if something comes up about that is not in that budget, but that I have to do a necessity? Say, for instance, my car, my, my radiator gets knocked. I have to fix it. Yeah, so, you, what, so what you do when you're making a budget, you create room for contingencies. That's what they're called. They're called contingencies. Okay. So you have emergencies, and then you also have, you're also supposed to have an emergency fund as well. So separate from the income that you make, right, that you use for your day-to-day -day expenses, you should also set some money aside for contingencies or emergencies. That's all right, okay, yes. we have to move on. Yes. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so you, uh, now you're talking on strategies to grow your income, there's real estate, there's stocks, there's yes. bonds, yes. there's mutual funds, there's gold. Let's yes. talk about, let's just talk about gold. Okay. How do I invest in gold? Yeah, gold is great. Yeah. Gold is great, but the only challenge I have with gold is that gold does not generate what I call residual passive income. Okay. Right? There so is more or less long term. It's long term. And, and, just, and then you just hold it and then you sell, you know. But it's a good hedge against inflation, right? And mm. it's a good store of value. So for people who are looking for long term capital appreciation, just to have an asset that has that can stand the test of time, right? Gold is a good one. Okay. But if you're looking for passive income, then maybe gold might not be for you. Might not be the best. Okay, let's yes. I love this one. Risk management. Yes. Investment risk and due diligence. Strategies yes. to manage risk, risks through diversification. Now, the reason Correct. why I mention this is that a lot of Nigerians have been victims of Ponzi schemes. Correct. And some of them are not Ponzi, some of them call themselves investment schemes. Yes. And a number of people are putting money so much so that one goes down, another one comes up, you hear another name. Yes. And you know yes. about due diligence. How can you perform? What, what, what markers can you give us 
for one to perform due diligence on a particular investment that you hear about? That's very, very, that's a very important question. Now, one of the reasons why people fall victim of these Ponzi schemes is because people do not check certain red flags, right? So they see an investment opportunity, it promises 3% per every day, 10% every day, and they jump into it, but there are always red flags. And mm. every Ponzi scheme has the red flags, but people are not sensitive towards it. For mm. instance, it, I mean, I've just mentioned it. If a company promises outrageous returns, then most, more, more likely than not, it's a Ponzi scheme, mm. right? That's the first thing. Abi Dele, I wish we had so much time. There's retirement, yeah. and maybe <laughs> there's also taking, investing, taking the baby steps and yeah. all of that, planning yeah. for early retirement. Of course, a retirement fund has to be set aside, yes, right? Obviously. But we have to go. It, okay. This is quite an interesting read. I hope people can gain a lot from this one. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Thank you. Take all right, care. that was it. A smart guy to invest in. We'll take this time out now. Stay with us. We'll be right back with our final guest. Thank you.